Hi, welcome back to another Punishing Grey Raven video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about, well, what comes after Alpha? What is life after Alpha? Because a lot of people have joined the game and the only thing that they've been hearing is you got to save for Alpha, you got to roll for Alpha, you got to get Alpha, bro. That's all a lot of people have been saying. However, there is a life after Alpha, guys. And so that's kind of what I want to talk about. Who should you exactly save for? What exactly does the income look like? Especially past like the first time reward bonus is going to be a lot of different changes changes and a lot of planning required on top of that there is like i wouldn't say it's complete misinformation but it's like just information that doesn't really apply to our server that's being spread around and so in this video i want to explore all of that because like i think it's really really important especially for the free to play and monthly players and so with that being said let's start off with this guy over here which is the cn release schedule so again you guys probably know this doc by now everyone knows this doc actually so massive shout out to rexlin as always and so what we have here is the cn release schedule so let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see a bit better so I can see a bit better and so as you can see we've got S alpha being released over here and so this is where we're at right now and so the next S that comes out is the S Bianca and then S Lucia and yeah it is Lucia apparently and then S Rosetta and then S and then you guys like can see that there is a pattern right and what that pattern is it's about like three months between each of these like S releases and so a massive reason as to why the CN server was like really touted as like wow it's super free to play is because like technically speaking all of the free to play players were able to roll for every single S unit however this observation was based on a lot of different things like with this one being one of the biggest ones having a three month gap between every single S rank is actually massive because it means that you're spending so much time saving up for it however when these schedules were kind of pushed on the other servers like TW and JP like it actually was pretty different because these banner like durations were shortened to about like two months each and so as you can imagine they have have one less month in between each of the banners to actually save up. Additionally, on CN, I believe that it was actually possible to get every single one of these weapons as well as the characters. However, the TW and the JP server players have observed that it is actually not possible to do that again because of this two month interval. And so why exactly am I referencing JP and TW so much? Because there was actually like some messaging from Kuro Games that we're going to be following a similar schedule. Of course, until we actually see when S Bianca is being released, we don't don't know if we're actually going to be accelerated to two months or not but all of their phrasing all of their wording have indicated that they are looking at doing a more tailored schedule for global to in like hopes of catching up to cn and so therefore i think it's going to be reasonable to assume that we're going to be going at this pace of jp and tw on top of that we do have the new kr server who did release like one week before us so we have like kind of a week's worth of foresight but yeah back to it this is kind of the schedule we're looking at and like we're looking at probably two month increments instead of three month increments but between each of the S ranks. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you guys is this guy over here, or like this guy over here, which is the PGR Black Card Planner. I think the guy is still improving on it, but massive shout out to you, Zonza75, for this guy over here. It's really good because it gives you like a really great estimation of a week by week what exactly your black cards should be looking like, depending on if you're like on free to play or if you're on like the monthly pass. And what I want to point out is that like the free to play gain you can see over here, it's denoted by this like teal looking column. And I want you to compare that against the monthly pass gain down here and that is actually like well a massive reason as to why it is really recommended to at least be on the monthly pass with that being said so especially with all of the pricing i know it's going to get really really expensive so i can't blame you guys for not being on it but essentially what you're going to see is that over like a year so we're starting at 715 and then if we go all the way to the next 718 you're going to see that the monthly pass users are indeed going to be getting an extra like i think 41k over the free to play players if every spark is going to be costing like 15k so spark guarantee 60 pity whatever you're gonna call it you can see that the monthly pass players are gonna have three additional sparks over the free-to-play players and so like from that regard it's kind of worth it however guys as always please be aware of all of the money that you are spending it is over 12 months it is gonna be like i don't know five six seven eight dollars per month very quickly it racks up to like 80 100 dollars but it's like it's up to you guys right it's entertainment i'm okay to play for that but yeah coming back to it like this is a really great calculator just to show like all of the different income sources and so PGI is really freaking good because like pretty much everyone can always be able to get all of these black card sources. Yes, we do have pain cage and we do have warzone rewards. However, they do not actually like scale the black cards depending on how well you do. And so yeah, have a look at this one to kind of map out where you're going. So let's have a look at this. So we've got alpha over here. You're expected at free to play to have 17k. And then by the time we get to S Bianca, you can see that we are at 30k, which is exactly actually two sparks. If we keep moving forward, let's see. So we've got 46k over here. So wow, actually, 
it might be it might be possible for everyone to get every single s rank however this then begs the question well how do i get the weapon then and so this is like when you have to start picking and choosing right if you want the weapon for a character for example like you've got an alpha you love it you love her she's like your wife and you want to kid her out and everything and you do want to remain free to play then you're going to start thinking about well who exactly should i cut out from this schedule so that is the first thing that i want to touch on so who exactly should you kill off from all of these guys over here and what i just saw was this guy over here which is the nier collab and so this is actually going to be really tough so essentially of course like if you guys like somebody or if you guys don't like somebody you can cut them off first that's like the most obvious choice however i do want to bring your attention to this guy over here which is the team comps guide by i think it was sheena that was his name yep sheena and so if i come up here what you're going to see is that there are actually a lot of different comps however there aren't actually overly many like different units and what i mean by that is that you can see that if you want to run an ice comp you have to go for raven which is your s lucia on the other hand if you want to go for fire you have to go for s karenina if you want to go for like the dps for the dark you have to go s luna however you are more fortunate for dark because like you can use a watanabe and then if i keep going up you've got the s bianca and the a lucia for the lightning and so you can start seeing that whilst there are some replacements for some teams like this there aren't really replacements for some of the others like this and so let me first talk through the reason that you should build every single element team first of all in the end game when you hit like tower of babel babel and a lot of the other end game content you're actually going to need multiple teams like even in pain cage we're seeing that now right you need at least three teams to deal with the three different bosses once you've hit like over level 55 or something and then not only that all of the pain cage bosses as well as all of the war zones there's going to be like different like attributes or like element effectiveness you guys have already seen it like in a lot of the war zones right now i think there's been a lot of bias towards fire it's like fire dps is up by 30 percent or 40 percent or something like that right and so it's for these kinds of reasons why you do want a team of like every single element however that is playing for the meta and i do think that you can skip some of them if you really really want to and so if you're going to skip someone you got to like really skip someone you know so like if we're for example skipping a whole team some people see the ice and like see how freaking rigid it is you've got the s raven and you got the s chrome what i mean by that is that if you want to skip anybody you probably should just skip the entire team so if you're wanting to skip s raven you could probably just get away with skipping s chrome as well obviously this isn't recommended because s raven is one of the better ones but that is not really the point of all of this like in this entire video actually a lot of players especially the players that want to get weapons are going to have to skip units and so like so for example if you skip s raven you can skip s chrome and then therefore you're just not going to have an ice team and that's it right so if you have a look over here we've got s lucia which is ice this is raven and so if you skip this banner it makes complete sense for you to skip this banner as well and so with that pity it means that you've actually gotten back about 30k black cards and so that translates to potentially about like three or four s rank weapons depending on like what you want to do with it that is the first way that i would look at like skipping things so for example if instead otherwise you don't really want like s bianca then you can take technically also skip s vera as well so like let's see we've got s bianca over here and then we got s vera down here and so the reason that it's so clear cut to make these kinds of like cuts is because like there actually is not really any room for you to be pulling on any banners other than the debut banner and what i mean by that is that pretty much like the first time that s bianca comes out she is at a hundred percent and if you're not going to pull there you're probably never going to be able to pull her you're not going to be going for her at that 70 percent rate on like that other rotational banner because you're probably going to be sinking all of those black cards into a weapon for somebody else or into the debut banners of the other characters and so yeah that's kind of like the first approach that i would take if you are going to cut anybody you cut their entire team like i said it's not 100 percent necessary for you to have like every single elemental team it is just advised to i guess make it a little bit easier for you but you definitely can keep up with playing the game and like clearing end game content it's just probably going to be like the inoptimal move if you really want to go shoot for those like high ranks for me personally i'm probably just going to try like get everybody because because I'm a massive collector and honestly I don't really care about like pain cage nor war zone like because like in the long run a lot of the war zone especially those rewards it's gonna mean doo-doo to you and so what I want to talk about next is these guys over here which are your compositors and so if you guys don't know about compositors these are essentially like your standalone units that don't really fit into any teams on top of that compositors can only be run with other compositors they cannot actually be run with these guys which are technically called structures and so quickly if you have a look at this one which is Chu, so we've got her 
Oh my lord. Fantastic. Man, all the compositors are just like great designs. I love them. But yeah, essentially it's kind of like the same thing. And like later on in content, there is going to be some modes or like some places where the compositors actually do better than structures and stuff. But the greatest thing about the compositors is that the pity is actually only 10 pulls. Now the big but to that is that I have not actually accounted for any of the compositors when I was looking at each of these guys over here, right? And on top of that, a lot of people do actually recommend that you go ham for like the triple S plus compositors. Me personally, I don't know if that's the right move for me, especially because I'm playing like the collecting game and compositors typically speaking, like will have less of an impact on the game than like structures. But yeah, if you're just looking to get a copy, it's going to be really, really easy. Hopefully you'll be able to like put together like I think one, no 2.5K, so a 10 pull for like each of these guys. But if you do intend to like triple S plus them, I think it's like 70 pulls or something, which is like actually really little compared to like the other ones. But yeah, that's what I mean by like your black cards may be going to another place like that are not weapons. It might be going towards compositors. And so with compositors out of the way, there is one last thing I want to talk about, which is the Nier collab. The Nier team is really, really interesting. You kind of need all of the Nier characters to make it work. And on top of that, you really need like a triple S A2 as well as her six star weapon. And so what all of this should be screaming out to you is that there is a significant amount of investment before you can actually make this team work. However, if you are able to make this team work, it's going to carry you through a lot of end game content. But you guys already heard it. You need three of these S units, although like a lot of them are actually given out for free. But as for A2, which is going to be your primary DPS, you do need the triple S as well as her weapon. And so if you are playing this game for Nier, which is pretty funny because like then why don't you go play Nier for Nier? But that's beside the point because this is probably like one of the only other games like that have done a collab with Nier that kind of plays like Nier. Anyway, back to it. So if you really are insistent on running this team, like you probably have to save from the very start and then dump everything on this banner over here. That is probably one of the only ways that you're actually going to be able to get this Nier team working. However, again, that is if you really want a meta slave, right? On top of that, however, there is something that's not actually mentioned here, which is that Nier is actually getting a rerun on the CN server. And so what that means is that if you weren't able to put together like your Nier team at this point in time, you can actually probably get it at some point later. Me personally, I honestly would advise going for like the full Nier team because you're sacrificing everything else for it. On top of that, you're going to be hoarding and not spending for the next 11 months. And guys, like to be honest, I don't know if that it really is any fun. If you told me that I can't roll for a whole year, like I don't even know if I want to play the game anymore, you know? And so it's with all of that in mind that I would recommend like against going for like a flat out hardcore Nier team. But on the other hand, if you are aware, like my advice doesn't even matter for you, like go have at it, my dudes. But yeah, so what exactly would I recommend? I would probably recommend at least going for every S rank you can. However, if you do have a favorite character and you do want to get the weapon for them, just start planning out who you are willing to drop and then look at that person that you're willing to drop and then you can drop the rest of their team as well. And so as for the compositors, I would recommend getting a copy of each of them just to be able to like give you that flexibility in case the content does require it. And then if possible, also get a copy of each of these guys over here, which shouldn't be too hard. Like I'm pretty sure you should be able to get almost every everybody. But yeah, depending on the different factors, like if there are any dead weeks, if they are going to actually like extend the banner like intervals to three months versus two months, depending on all of these things, you guys just need to think for yourself a little bit and like make the appropriate adjustments. But yeah, for free to play players, definitely prioritize who you would kick out first. And for monthly players, there is a chance that we can actually get some of the weapons for some of the characters we want. Honestly, nothing is set in stone right now. We are probably closest to KR server and they are only giving us like a week's worth of foresight. We might not even actually be following the TW or JP schedule, we might be going at 1.5 months like per interval between each of these like S characters. It's really, really hard to say, but like hopefully I've given you all of the different tools for you guys to be able to actually make that decision. And so with all of that being said, I don't think there's too much left to be said. And so let's start wrapping up this video. I've got a secret question for you guys. And that is, well, of all of these characters that are coming up, and if you guys don't know them, like just go check them out on like the Punishing Grey Raven wiki over here. And if this boy doesn't suit your needs, then you can actually come over here to uh, this link down down here, which is the CN wiki. And this is actually going to like show you a lot of the different characters. But yeah, of all of the upcoming characters, who are you guys most hyped for? For me, I do love Alpha a lot. I think Alpha is just like such a little gem. However, if we're talking about in terms of waifus, like, oh my God, S2 and S Selena. Oh my lordy. And then we've got number 21 as well. If you guys have a look at them, just like, 
are so mint. I cannot wait for them to be released. However, Jesus, it's gonna be like probably like six months away before we even see. Wait, that's only Kamu. And I'm looking for S2. So that's probably gonna be like, yeah, eight months away for S2. Oh my God. Anyway, you guys let me know who you're interested in or like who you're willing to drop. And if you guys would be so kind to drop that into the comments below, I would really appreciate it because it means you've actually watched up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, please consider a like, a sub, a follow, a pin. You guys already know what it is. Come join the Discord, which is in the description. If you are feeling a bit lonely, if you want some friends to play with, and if you would like to support the channel, we have some affiliate links as well as like a membership program thing. But otherwise, as Watanabe once said in the story mode, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.